go ahead and put it down. And then we hit it with the wand and it becomes our Vamanomicon. Hello and welcome to another episode of Regrowth Reloaded. Okay, as you can see, we are here in the witchery area and our silverwood tree has grown. Uh, not only that, this one does have a um, pure node in it because we are now, if we take a look at this, standing in a magical forest biome. So. Uh, just this area here where it's kind of this bright uh, green grass That is the extent of our our magical forest biome, but hey, Who knows maybe we'll be able to get it to spread um, Also over here. This is our great wood tree that we planted One of them anyways, and you can see it's uh, pretty big and part of it overlaps in the magical forest That's why those leaves are a different color I do have another great wood here and another silver wood that I went ahead and planted closer to the altar hoping that we would get the magical forest out of it. No, nah, not with this one. So I'm probably going to wind up cutting this one down for the wood in one of the great woods, replanting them um, just so that we can have uh, some of the wood that we're going to need uh, for bomb craft. And we are going to delve a little bit into Thalmcraft today. So, uh, but let's uh, come back over here. I'm going to go back downstairs and I'll meet you down there in just a moment. All right. In the last episode, we delved a little bit into the fishing. So let's uh, take a look at that. That was ch uh, chapter eight, the encoding of the world. So we made the sifter, which is right here. I showed you how to sift um, dirt to get um, worms and ants. Uh, but you can also like sift leaves and get grasshoppers out of that. So uh, there's different things that you can sift in there. You just have to look through the book and see what all you can use in there. Uh, so let's come back in here. We did the uh, this where we had to craft a reed fishing rod and catch a live fish, which we did. So we got our stuff out of that. And now it wants us to make a uh, fish feeder. Once you have yourself some live fish, you want to build a tank to keep them in. Different fish species require different sized tanks to live in. The core of any tank is the fish feeder, which deploys fish food to sustain the fish and is also a, and is also the point where you can interact with the otherwise freeform tank structure. A tank is measured as the number of blocks of water surrounding the tank. When you place your fish in the tank through the interface of the feeder, it may give you an error message. If the tank is too small, it will tell you how many more blocks of water need to be nearby for that fish species. The tank size also determines the amount of fish food that can be stored in the feeder at once. To provide fish food, you can either drop the fish meal, in, uh, meal item in the water around the feeder or you can pump in liquid fish food. So I've made some fish meal. I'll show you how to do that. It's really easy. Well, let's first start off with the fish feeder. Let's take a look at that recipe and that is six pieces of wicker, two raw fish, and a chest. And the wicker is sticks and sugar cane. So let's uh, come over here and let's see if we can do this real quick. Uh, let's see, wicker. We need six of those. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, let's go ahead and Put those in the system here and we'll just look at fish feeder fish feeder there we go pull that recipe up I did have some raw fish in my inventory so we got our fish feeder all right let me go ahead and show you how to make fish food and that is simply taking raw fish putting them into your crafting grid and that makes fish meal. So we can do that. Different size fish will give you more meal. 
something like that. And that's how we make the fish food that we're going to be using. So let's go ahead and check this. Is there anything else? Crafting task, it wants us to make a basic cooling upgrade. You may also find you need cooling upgrades to make the temperature of the tank habitable for the fish. To get the needed snow, you can use the snowbell plant, which you may, may need to do mutations to get. We already have the snowbell. We have snow in our system too. So let's take a look at the basic cooling upgrade. It's right there, basic cooling upgrade. So we need two cooling components, which uh, we know how to make. That's just uh, iron and slabs, uh, two snowballs and, and snow. So let's see if we got that. All right, so let's come back in here. Go ahead and click on this. We're gonna make two of these. Come back in here. And there we go, we have a basic cooling component. Does this complete the task? It does, and we get eight bottles of fish food. All right, let's see how we make the bottles of fish food. Bottle of fish food. And that is a bottler with fish food in it, or yeah. Okay, I don't think we need that though. But let's uh, go see what I've done. We'll go this way. No, we won't. We have to go up here through this area. And then we'll come out here. Because this is right by our fishing spot. Now, you might notice over here, too, that I have a fenced-in area that's filled with water. This is my tank. I made a 5x5x5 five by five by five deep area to put the tank in that I'm going to use as a tank, I should say. And then we come around here to the back, we can have access to this. Now, I think all we have to do is set the fish feeder down somewhere in the center of this, like that. And we should be able to reach into it like that so let's see over here in this chest i have a bunch of live fish so we have some damselfish we have cod we have neon tetras uh and one stingray so let's see if we can do maybe some neon tetras i've got a male i've got two males there i got another male there and one female i got two females okay let me take a female here and a male See if these guys will play nice in here. Female goes in the pink slot. The male goes in the, that spot. Uh, one of your fish is not happy. No fish food. Let's go ahead and um, put fish meal in here. There we go. And they are breeding. We don't need to add the cooling component in there. It takes a while for them to do anything, but. That's all we really have to do. The fish are swimming around in there and doing their thing. And when their lifestyle ends, then they will either drop eggs or other things over in this area. And that's what we need to collect. So uh, is there anything else we need to do in this quest? So the next thing is hatching a plan. Once your fish are happy in their tank, they will eventually die off, leaving behind some eggs. Minnows are a good starting point for fish breeding, being able to survive in this environment with three basic cooling upgrades installed. So we need to get some fish eggs. So that's, we're waiting on that. Um, so that's just gonna take time. So let's go back downstairs and I'll meet you there in just a moment. All right, uh, let's go ahead and take a look in the book and we're gonna continue in this. We're gonna go ahead and start on bees. I know I'm not, really wanting to do this but it does need to be done so if we come in here bees somehow there still seem to be beehives dotting the terrain using a scoop to break the hive allows you to collect some bees which you believe you can help evolve to be better so uh, making a scoop from wool will allow you to collect bees from the hives you've seen scattered across the wasteland it wanted us to get a modest princess which we did because uh, if you remember in, in our quest, we went out there and I just went ahead and collected bees along the way since we were out and about 
and that and there were a couple of beehives that were underground as well so we got ourselves a modest princess the next thing it wants us to do is craft a bee house if you use a comb that you harvested from the hives you should be able to construct a new housing for the bees which will make it easy for you to collect products they produce so it wants us to make a bee house let's take a look at the recipe for that and that is three slabs five planks and some type of comb now we've got our bee stuff over here so we've got some comb we've got uh, honeycomb we've got some parched comb let's see if we can do this with the parched comb uh, come over here let's look up bee house bee house pull that in and there we go we've got ourselves a bee house anything else okay now we get 16 parched combs for that so let's go ahead and claim our reward all right so okay let's see what breaking out in hives is since starting working with modest bees you began recalling other variants of hives existing in the past maybe by reconstructing a modest hive back to its original condition you can then use alchemy to exchange it for one of the other varieties okay so it wants us to get a modest hive so let's see how we would go about doing that so we look in here look at our recipe okay so we need a princess three drones two sand a cactus earth and air so let's this is any princess just says princess all right let's see what we've got here I'm gonna hold on to my modest princess And let's see what other princess do we have uh, these are all modest princesses ignoble stock have any good ones pristine hold on to her it's valiant all right so we'll take her See, do we have any drones I do okay so I need three drones all right so what else did we need for this two sand a cactus earth and air two sand cactus I know why am I looking there I should be just looking in here one cactus earth and air So let's run over to our Britannia area. And let's get this started. All right. Okay, so we have air, earth, princess, Three drones, two sand, and cactus. And get one forest. And let's see how long it's going to take. And we're almost done. There we go. And we have ourselves a modest hive. All right, let's take a look at our quest book. All right, so now it wants us to get a meadows hive now a meadows hive so if we take a look at this we have to go through um, mana infusion to do this so that's a forest hive becomes a meadow and a oblivion becomes forest 
infernal becomes oblivion, deep becomes infernal, resonating becomes deep, unusual becomes resonating, curious becomes unusual, nether becomes curious, rock becomes nether, water becomes rock, marshy becomes water, wintry becomes marshy, ender blah 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 tropical modest so we got to go through until we get to a meadows hive so we need to use the alchemic one with the catalyst in it so let's keep tossing them in there until we get to our meadows hive ender wintry marshy water rock nether curious unusual, resonating, deep, infernal, oblivion, forest, meadows. There we go. Take a look at our quest book. Anything else? Nope. And that gives us two forests, two meadows, and two tropical hives. All right. What is next in here then? We can either do B more or B's for better housing. Let's take a look at B's for better housing and see what that one involves. In order to get more serious about bee breeding, you're going to need a form of housing that is further from the natural hive. In an apiary, ignoble princess will eventually die out, but breeding bees of different species together can result in mutations to better species. So an apiary is what it wants us to craft. So let's take a look at that. And that's impregnated casing surrounded by uh, planks and slabs. So what's this impregnated casing? It is, okay, so this is um, logs in a carpenter with seed oil and seed oil, we have to get through the squeezer. We don't have any of that, so I'm gonna have to I don't have the squeezer set up down here. It's upstairs. So I'm gonna have to do that off camera and we'll we'll complete that task in the next one. Let's take a look at the other one that we had in there. Uh, the the B more. The process of manually recreating hives is a bit painful, honestly, and finding a better way to get bees might be worthwhile. The hive of synth flower is the answer, using mana to pull bees into existence. Okay, so it wants us to make a hive sense. And let's take a look at that. And that is in the Petal Apothecary, light blue, two cyan, mystical blue, one, two, three, four mana powder, and a redstone root. Okay, we have everything for that. So it was light blue. Two cyan, regular blue, four mana powder, and a redstone root. One, two, three, four, and do we have a redstone root in here? Right there. Okay. Let me get my bucket of water. We will need a seed as well, but we got those over there. So, one light blue, two cyan, just rearranged, one blue. Or mana powder, a redstone root. And a seed. Come on. And we have our hyvacinth. So let's take a look at that. Get my book back out. Okay, and that gives us eight more modest hives. 
And then it got another one, be better. Let's take a look at this real quick. Nothing's more frustrating than realizing the princesses you've extracted from a hive is one of the inferior ignoble variety and its bloodline will eventually die off. Luckily, there's a flower for that you for that too. Simply feed the hibiscus your ignoble princesses and with a lot of mana and a fair bit of time, it'll make them nice and pristine. So it wants us to make a hibiscus. And that's going to give us an oblivion frame. So let's take a look at this real quick. Oh my goodness. Orange, one, two, three, magenta, red, mana powder, air, summer, envy, greed, pride, and a redstone root. Okay. Let me get these out of the way here. And let's take a look at that again. Orange, three magenta, and red. One orange. Uh, magenta, there's the red. Is that magenta? Okay. Orange, red, three magenta. And then we need Air, Summer, Envy. Air. Summer, Envy. And Greed and Pride. Greed. Pride. It's pride here. Okay. Alright, so let's uh, get this bad boy going here. Get my bucket. Ah. Okay. Orange, red. Magenta, air, envy, greed, pride, summer, and a seed. Now, what am I missing? Orange. Orange, red, and three magenta. Orange, red, three magenta. Oh, and a mana powder. Okay. What am I missing? Orange. Magenta, three, red. Mana powder, air, summer. Envy, greed, and pride. All right, let me take all these out here. And I'll, I'll do this real quick and I'll be right back with you. Okay, let's try this again. I forgot the redstone root. That orange, mana powder, summer, pride. Okay. Three magenta, red, and seed. And the Am I out of redstone root? Thought I grabbed one. Yeah, it just was invisible in my inventory for some reason. Okay, let's try this again. 
There we go. Now we have our hibiscus. All right, and we get an oblivion frame as our reward. All right, so I think I need to work on this before anything else will open up in here. So let's, uh, let me put this stuff away and I'll be right back with you. Okay, so let's uh, do uh, something a little bit in Thawmcraft to at least kind of get started with that. And that is chapter 11, The Way the World Feels. And we're going to start off here with the capping show. You recall that capping a stick with small amounts of iron produces a crude thaumaturgist wand. There's not much you can do with it currently, but making it can't do much harm. So we need to make two iron caps. And let's take a look at that. And that is just uh, five iron nuggets will make one. So we'll have to make uh, get 10 of them. So let's uh, come in here and see iron caps. Come in here. So one, two of those. Okay. And then it wants us, then craft the caps with a stick to attach them to the ends, making yourself the most basic of wands. So let's just do stick. Go ahead and grab one of these. Put the caps on it. Like that, and there we go. We have an iron capped wand. So let's uh, go ahead and take a look. Is there anything in here? Nope, that gives us iron, nine iron ingots. Go ahead and claim our reward. All right, this opens up a little bit more in here. So let's uh, look at boiling anticipation. Huh, seems there's just one other thing you can do with your wand for the moment. Using it on a mundane cauldron embellishes it with the ability to dissolve items into their component aspects when it contains boiling water. Filling it with the water is simple enough and boiling the water should be possible by placing a heat source such as lava underneath the crucible. Unfortunately, you're unsure what you can use for this use this for at this stage and items dissolved in it seem to slowly break down even further and eventually cause a bit of a purple mess. So we need to make a crucible and we're going to get four water cans out of that. So the crucible is we're going to take and we're going to make a cauldron and I'm going to go ahead and clear that out and we're going to put that down and then we're going to take our wand and tap it there we go. We now have a thaumaturge crucible. So if we pick that up, we should be able to come back into our quest book and claim our reward on that. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to go with life through a lens. So let's take a look at that one real quick. Now that you've got some elemental shards, you can use them to attune a lens to the primal energies in the world. This will then allow you to scan blocks and items in the world to analyze what aspects they consist of. While looking through the th thermometer, you can also make out small nodes of primal V around the world. From these, you can fill your wand with V by right-clicking the node with the wand. Be careful though, wands of wood and iron have little precision and can completely destroy an aspect from a node if one is not careful. So we need to make a thaumometer and it's going to give us 32 essence shards. And this is what the essence shards are used for is to making these uh, shards here. And I've gone ahead and made uh, these up. So I have air, fire, uh, water, earth, and uh, order and entropy. So let's take a look in here and let's look at the recipe. Thaumometer thaumometer and that is a mana lens with two shards of any type and two gold ingots. So let's go ahead and make our mana lens. Go ahead and toss that in there and then we can do this and just make ourselves a thaumometer. Alright. Anything else on that? No, it gives us 32 essence shards so let's go ahead and claim that. All right, and that's as far as we can go in this at the moment. And I do believe we need to come in here and what the world teaches. Yeah, and it wants us to make the Thaumonomicon. So let's look at that real quick. 
the Thaumanamanamakan. One thing which you can use the iron cap wooden wand for has become apparent. If you wave it at a bookcase, it will transform the bookcase into a magical tome called the Thaumanamakan, which keeps records record of your knowledge of thaumaturgy updating as you learn more. So we need to make a Thaumanamakan, and to do that, we're going to need a bookcase, and that's a standard vanilla bookcase. Bookcase. right there a bookshelf let's go ahead and do that clean one of those there we go let's go ahead and put it down and then we hit it with the wand and it becomes our thaumonomicon all right let's take a look at our quest book and we get three books and eight experience drops all right, well, that's it for this episode. We got um, most of our fish quest line done. We just need to get them to breed and get some eggs so that we can finish up that last part of the quest. Um, we've started a little bit on bees. I'm probably going to go and set up one of those bee houses somewhere, um, get the, the bees started at least, and um, work on uh, getting some seed oil, which is just putting seeds in that squeezer. It's nothing big there so we'll get that so that i can make that impregnated casing that we need uh to make the better bee house so um we'll see what we get up to in the next episode but until then this is desert rat have a good one goodbye